What is going on, D5 Rebels? Welcome back to another update video here. I'm not able to go live today. I have some inspectors coming over here shortly, but I will be live tonight at 7.30 Central Time to kind of recap the day and, you know, recap the week and bring us on into the weekend. But as everyone is here, please do me a favor, thumbs up the video, subscribe, turn on notifications. We do go live twice a day, typically about 12 o'clock around lunchtime, right? And then every night, 7.30 Central Standard Time. So Bitcoin is down, markets are down today. So we do have some news that I wanna talk about first. So inflation came in hot. This is the third hot inflation report in a row. So, you know, expectations were like 0.3%, uh, I believe, or 0.5%, but we came in at 0.6% from the previous month, previous month, 4.7% year over year, faster than in December, right? So core inflation in January was hotter than expected. Uh, it's, it's pretty much at this point ensuring that the Fed is going to keep on raising interest rates. So the stock markets right now, you know, Dow's down 500 points, S&P's down a percent and a half, NASDAQ's down 2%, right? So the hot inflation report is rattling Wall Street, rattling the markets. Bitcoin is correcting. All coins are bleeding even harder as a result. So... We do have some speeches from some of the Fed governors today, and I'm sure they're going to all say the same thing, that we need to keep raising rates. We need to get more aggressive. So I would expect a, a 50 basis point hike coming shortly. So again, right, the Fed is gearing up for a longer than expected inflation um, inflation fight. And this might start doing away with our soft landing that they were talking about, or our potential soft landing. I mean, this thing might go into recession if this continues up because... Three back-to-back -back inflation reports being hot again. Not good. Some of the Fed governors, uh, you know, saying we require another 50 basis point rate hike at the next policy meeting in March. So this is Laura J. Mester uh, from the Cleveland Federal Reserve Bank. She did speak today. Some NFT news going on today. So we have a Paris-based NFT factory is hoping to onboard the masses into crypto via a gallery-style NFT space. So there you go. It's a physical building showing NFT collections. And a lot of people are saying kind of a similar thing that NFTs could be a gateway to crypto for a lot of people, especially once they start having real-world uses, which are starting to become more and more like Spotify running a pilot program for token-enabled playlists with NFT partners. Um, Universal Music Group and, you know, uh, Queen, Missy Elliott, Snoop Dogg, Led Zeppelin, testing period for three months and, you know, NFT locked playlists, things like that. A uh, new service was designed in partnership with the Web3 gaming ecosystem, Overlord, and involves a token enabled community curated playlist that can be accessed via Web3 wallets of those who hold the creeps NFTs on Spotify. So maybe we check out creeps NFTs, right? And there you go. Creeps.co. Staking, connect wall. I'm not going to get this isn't a creeps NFT, but if you want to check it out further, creeps.co is where you would do that. Uh, DEA, U.S. Drug Enforcement Agency, seized $1.8 million from Binance in 22. This seems like a nothing burger, right? For all the talk that, uh, you know, Elizabeth Warren and different politicians talk about how crypto is a, a money laundering front. This is fucking chicken scratch, right? I'm sure they seized a thousand times that in actual cash. We are starting to run a little bit in Bitcoin. Just, I was just looking up at Bookmap and it started to go crazy. But uh, talked about that already. Just be aware of these attacks that are out there. Don't click on links. You shouldn't uh, be wary of any email sent to you from anybody out there. Uh, literally don't click on anything on the computer that you're trading on. Right. I mean, any emails. I mean, there's sophisticated emails out there now that look like they're actually being sent from Coinbase or MEXC or you know, different NFT platforms saying, hey, you, you know, you invite you to take part in this airdrop. Click on me. Just just be careful. Be careful out there. If it sounds too good to be true, I guarantee you it is. But let's take a look at the markets as they're starting to pump a little bit here. Uh, we're talking 60 bucks, so it's not a lot, but we've been down. I mean, we started the day. Let me get rid of the yellow line here. So we started the day in this smaller pattern. 
right? That was inside of a larger pattern. Let me go to seven minute chart. So we started the day. This is that kind of bigger time frame, smaller time frame. Broke outside of both today. I mean, we've just been tanking on those inflation numbers. You know, the breakout from this takes it down to about 22,134. Whether or not we actually sink that low or lower than we're currently at, it's going to be 100% dependent on the bulls. If the bulls can come out to play or not. Take a look at the daily on Market Cipher B. We're still working off this red dot that we printed on Wednesday. We're still tanking in the money flow. VWAP is down. RSI and Stokes are pointed down. So the daily still wants to dump. So if we take a look at the 12 hour, 12 hours telling us the same thing. Everything's coming down here. The RSIs and the Stokes are up here pointed down. This is the momentum, the blue tanking. VWAP, the volume weighted average profile is coming down. And this green is the money flow. Everything's heading down. Take a look at the four hour. Same story, same exact story. Take a look at the 30 minute. A little bit of a different story printed a green dot here so here's what we need so if you want to be bullish if you want to start taking profits start looking at your stop losses you need to see these smaller time frames continue to a positive money flow right so even the 15 minutes still bleeding a little bit seven minutes still bleeding a little bit five minutes taken up which correlates to the pump which has happened in the last five minutes so if we retrace this again we're bearish again if we keep pump in this could be it this could be the breakout that we needed markets could start correcting a little bit whether it is or isn't i'm not going to even i'm in a play i'm currently setting my stop loss tight uh, after this big drop if i get stomped out of it i'm just going to wait and watch and see what happens and follow the money always follow the money but so that's pretty much where we're at right now i mean i don't want to drag this out too long we are sitting on a volume gap so if we go to the daily chart and zoom it down a little bit. You know, starts at about 22,600, which is uh, right here, right? So if we hit that, we for sure will get down to 22,134, maybe even 21,900, kind of in this volume node here. So we need to hold this POC or this red line right here, the point of control. 22. 2996. That's a key level we need to hold. You can see we wicked into it and then shot back up, which is good. Uh, I, I'm afraid that if we retest it again, we'll probably break through it. So key level 22, 23,000, we'll call it, right? That is a very key level to hold the POC. Because look over here, this volume gap that I'm talking about, we shot up it fast. We can shoot down it just as fast in a day. This was back from Wednesday the 15th, right? So about nine days ago. That's why these volume gaps, especially when you get to local times like this, where you don't zoom all the way out, right? On the daily chart are important to watch for because it wants to drag us down to this volume node down here. It, it wants it. It wants to go down here. So pay attention to the smaller time frames. Pay attention to Discord. Pay attention to what we're, we're talking about. Ask questions. All of our links are down below, right? We do go live twice a day, you know, usually about lunchtime, give or take, sometimes earlier, sometimes later, depends on the day, but every night, 7.30 standard time, uh, st central standard time, we go live, cover the news for the day, set you up for the night as we get into kind of the Asian trading hours. But we've been talking uh, all day in Discord, posting charts, posting wins. It was fun to see a lot of people taking profits uh, and in the profit today as we are sinking right alts are bleeding i mean you can see across the board pretty much op's not going up on that coinbase news still uh liquidity 11 percent down but alts are bleeding more than bitcoin is today so again twenty three thousand is a key level that i want to watch i'm just going to show me a thousand times apparently let me switch my display real quick here for you guys. Boom, there we go. So this is book map, right? You can see there's not a lot of orders above us. So you get up to about 25,000. 24,700-ish to 25,000. They're starting to come in below us. I mean, we could tank all the way down to 20,000, right? That's what a lot of people are betting on right now. Actually, I better move myself so you can see what the hell I'm talking about. 
there's tons of orders coming in down at 20,000. So a lot of people are betting we're going down there. It's a bet. Whether or not they're right or wrong, time will tell. I don't really like to speculate on giant moves like that. Um, I like to just go with the flow. We're dumping right now. I'm in a play. I'm going to ride it until we're not dumping anymore. And then I'll get out and evaluate it. I wouldn't get too lost in the speculations, right? Like I was on Twitter today and there was people calling for a $15,000. I saw a $10,000 Bitcoin. It's like you have one day or three to four days in this case of correction. Everyone just loses their freaking mind. Now the inflation numbers are bad. The markets are shook. Yes, but just go with the flow. Just go with the flow. Go with what's happening. Don't try to time the bottom of markets, the top of markets. Just go with the flow. You know, don't... Uh, don't fight the markets. If we're dumping, we're dumping until we're not dumping anymore. Play your stop losses accordingly. Uh, if you've already missed this today, maybe sit up for a little while. You don't need to be in a trade every day. If you've just watching this right now, you know, we are going in for a little bit of a retest, right? We're coming up a little bit. So we're down, up, down. It looks like we're starting to kind of climb up again. So we'll see if we can get this retest. Uh, what I would need to see is a retest. Oops, get rid of that back into Jesus. I'd want to see a retest back into the main pattern here. So right about 23.3, we'll call it 400, right? 23.350 to 23.400. We want to break back inside of this main channel to kind of breathe again for the bulls. But right now the bulls are sitting on the sidelines, bears are running it. It's that simple. So 23,000 level I want to watch and then 23,300 ish to get back into this channel. That's what I'm watching today. I'll keep posting charts all day long and my thoughts in Discord as often as I can. And as always, feel free to drop any questions. Hey, Air, what do you think about this? Take me in Discord. I'll answer it for you. Or hey, Air, chart this, chart that. I'll be more than happy to answer it um, when I can, right? That's what... Uh, I'm here for, I want to teach you guys. I don't want to just tell you guys to buy X stock. I want you to be able to figure that out for yourself, but don't want to drag this on. I will see you guys tonight. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. Remember we're trading over on MEXC Global, 10% off commissions, lowest commission in the industry. If you're not using MEXC Global, you're an idiot. That's simple. Don't be an idiot. Be smart. But that's it. We'll see you guys later. Bye.